It has been almost a year since the release of the NES Classic Edition, and it's time to play with power again. We're even playing with Super Power. On this episode of Mud Prince Unboxes, we're taking a look at the Super NES Classic Edition from Nintendo. Last year, everyone and their mom lost their collective stuff over Nintendo's NES Classic Edition Micro Console. Its miniaturized size and 30 built-in games conjured a lot of nostalgia. Well, for those that were able to get one, anyway. Now, almost a year later, the Super NES Classic aims to deliver the same level of old-school kicks. And it might end up doing so. Let's take a closer look. The Super NES Classic comes in a box with exactly the same dimensions as that of the NES Classic. Opening along the sides, the box's inner flap has a cute message. Now you're playing with Super Power. The console and its components and extras come fairly tightly packaged inside this rather small box. On the top is a small packet with various bits of information and instructions, as well as a cool replica poster similar to those found within Super NES products of days past. The system itself is packed away in a small foam bag, protecting it from dings and scratches. Sporting the exact same tone of the original Super NES, its lack of yellowing is quite refreshing. It has a satisfying weight and solid feeling materials, just like the NES Classic. Once again, there's no functional cartridge port, as its 21 games are entirely built in. Interestingly, the controller ports are hidden under a small panel that can be picked out of place and is attached by a small rubberized flap. It can be snapped back into place when done. The classic controller ports are therefore non-functional, but look super cool. Along the back are the micro USB power port and an HDMI port which is, once again, mysteriously upside down, just like the NES Classic. Hmm. Further in the box are the Super NES's two controllers. The NES Classic was infamous for having far, far fewer extra controllers as it did actual units, so most people, like us, were forced to use a third-party alternative. The NES Classics controllers also had very short cables. The Super NES Classics controllers have a 4.5 foot cable, which is once again very short by comparison to the original. In fact, they're still only about half as long. For those that have extension cables from the NES Classic though, they work for the Super NES Classic as well. As with the console itself, the Super NES Classics controllers are extremely well built. If adapters were made to use these controllers on original hardware, we'd definitely be doing that. After all, there's just nothing like getting a fresh first-party controller for a 27-year-old console. Finally, the Super NES Classic comes bundled with a very robust Walwart-style adapter that, this time around, is Nintendo-branded, as well as a generic micro-USB cable and a Nintendo-branded HDMI cord. The Super NES Classic doesn't necessarily require the Walwart USB adapter, though. It can be powered by the USB port that most modern TVs support. Nintendo is very stingy when it comes to showing footage of its stuff on YouTube, so we can't actually show you any of the SNES Classics interface. Or gameplay in general. You know, just in case. But nothing stops us from showing you third-party game footage via our Framemeister, which is pretty much the same as you'll get with the SNES Classic Edition, though the SNES Classic only outputs at 720p. That said, games play cleanly and fluidly with exactly the same slowdown as you'd find on the real deal. The home menus and interface is clean and well-designed, with Super NES-style BGM remixed from the NES Classics home screen BGM. A number of filters also exist for the games as well, such as the CRT effect and the ability to change the aspect ratio. Borders for the empty space that the Super NES's native 4 to 3 aspect ratio leaves behind are also included as well. Yet another nice touch. Like the NES Classic, the Super NES Classic also has a number of save slots, 4 per game, that let the player save on the fly. Pressing the reset button on the system allows players to go back to the home menu at any time. There's even a neat rewind function, allowing players to rewind the game if they die or miss a critical item. Nice touch. With a wide variety of games over a good amount of genres, the 21 games included on the Super NES Classic Edition make for a pretty great time, though its lack of shmups is something we're particularly critical of. At least it has Contra 3 and Star Fox. Speaking of which, perhaps the best part of the Super NES Classic is the inclusion of Star Fox 2 as an official release, finally after 22 years. It has definitely been a long time coming, and while some outlets may have divisive opinions as of this video, we can say that is pretty darn fun. 
The Super NES Classic Edition's library would cost well over $1,000 to collect even without Star Fox 2. So having such high-tier games, especially those such as Earthbound, readily available at any time, is excellent. So, let's see how the Super NES Classic Edition stacks up. With exactly the same dimensions as its direct predecessor, the Super NES Classics box houses a lot of stuff in the same amount of space. Clever references hearkening back to the early 90s are a great touch. The Super NES Classic Edition has a satisfying build that doesn't feel especially cheap. Its controllers are perfectly recreated too, though their short cables might be a tad problematic. In terms of extras, the Super NES Classic comes with two controllers this time around. Finally, no need to hunt down another controller for two-player goodness. The power adapter is also a great addition, which is missing from its European and Japanese equivalents. Functionally, the Super NES Classic Edition accomplishes what it sets out to do, run classic games in HD from a tiny form-factored microsystem. The rewind function is great, and the selection of games is super solid. At $79.99 US, the price of the Super NES Classic is moderate, though the extra controller and great selection of packed-in games make it an excellent value despite this. And come on, Star Fox 2, it's finally officially available! All in all, we couldn't really ask for more out of the Super NES Classic without hacking it to bits. Obviously, people will invariably be critical about the lineup. In our case, we're only missing 3 out of the 21 games here, but the sheer convenience, not to mention 2-player classic gaming right out of the box, makes this a great addition to our Neo Retro lineup, and we like the selection that's here. As such, the Super NES Classic Edition gets a 4.75 out of 5.